recently realized that people are really important. You see, I'm a plant scientist, so I know plants are important, but I wasn't quite aware just how important people are. Humanity as a whole is having a big, big impact on this planet. We're changing the composition of the atmosphere, reshaping entire ecosystems, and even creating our own. But unfortunately, our impact is not really that positive. We seem to be responsible for the uh, sixth mass extinction event. What a legacy. We're up there with asteroids and supervolcanoes. But is this really the kind of legacy we wish to have? Now, our impressive impact on the planet is a direct product of our incredible success as a species. A success which can largely be attributed to our fantastic intelligence and creativity. So the good news is that if we use this intelligence and creativity right, we can make our impact a positive one and leave a legacy that we can be proud of. Now, in, the, in terms of things that we can do, we're going to have to have, of course, a lot of clever and uh, creative solutions. But one of them was essential to our past, and I believe it will also be essential to our future. If we use it right, we can create a society or a civilization which will be sustainable in the long term. This innovation of our past and for our future is our ability to deliberately, and I stress deliberately, genetically modify the world around us. Now, there is some debate regarding where and when this first happened, but there is little doubt that it was in full swing by about 10,000 years ago. Our ability to deliberately genetically modify key species was the breakthrough which nourished the root of civilization. To my mind, the current debate surrounding the use of genetically modified organisms is a little behind the times. We've already genetically modified all of our crops and livestock to such an extent that we can barely recognize their wild ancestors. And in many cases, they're utterly dependent upon us and we on them for our continued survival. This is a beautiful symbiosis. The thing is, though, that most of our genetic impact on the world around us is not intentional. It is not deliberate. It is an accident. This collateral genetic modification of the world around us is giving rise to the sixth mass extinction event. It is a disaster for much of the biosphere. Now, if we are to overcome this, we need to think of ways that we can use it, use our ability to genetically modify the world to save this. This unintentional genetic modification has diverse sources. It can happen in many ways, and it has diverse outcomes. One of the uh, most common results is that genetic variation is reduced in the species. And this happens when populations become small. For example, when uh, we destroyed our habitats, or when we hunt them, or harvest them too, too much. And when the size of a population is reduced, its genetic variation is eroded, and this puts it at extreme risk for extinction. Because genetic variation is the fuel of evolution. And if this fuel runs out, the species can no longer adapt, and extinction results. So on the one hand, our ability to deliberately genetically modify the world around us has allowed us to domesticate species and has allowed us to lay the foundation of civilization. And in turn, our amazing success due to our civilization is causing us to unintentionally genetically damage the world and is leading to this sixth mass extinction event. So how can deliberate genetic modification help? Well, first, it can allow us to increase our agricultural productivity to such an extent that we no longer need to expand our farming land. We can even reduce it. And this is really, really important. Because what is essential to saving most of these species is our ability to protect their habitats. And we won't be able to do this if we can't produce enough food. The other thing that it can help with is increasing our knowledge and our ability to save species on the brink of extinction and even bring them back from the dead. Now, this may sound far-fetched, but we've actually already achieved it in the case of the Pyrenean ibex, which we brought back from extinction only to lose it again, and it now has the uh, dubious honor of being the only species which has gone extinct twice. But we are getting there. Now, for many people, the current debate surrounding genetic modification, the main focus is that we feel we should not be interfering. But in reality, we will always interfere. Our, our very existence leaves an indelible genetic signature on the world around us. But does this interference pose a risk? Well, of course it does. There is nothing without risk. It's not 
whether there is risk or not, if we do it deliberately, we can manage that risk. We can understand that if it's an accidental thing, unintentional, there's no way we can manage that risk. Every time we choose to save a species on the brink of extinction or create a new crop variety, we will need to weigh the risks. Should we do something or should we do nothing? But what does doing something entail? Now, I just want to remind you again that genetic modification is nothing new. As I just said a few minutes ago, it is something we've been doing for at least 10 millennia. It's, it's an ancient invention. And for most of that time, how we did it was we used previously present genetic variation or spontaneously occurring genetic variation. And we selected upon it to create and the crop varieties we have today and, and the animals and all of the traits that we need. And it's been fantastically successful and useful. And we're continuing to do it to this day and we'll do it for the future. But it has two problems. First, it's really very, very slow. And the second is that if the variation you need is not there, then you're, at, you're out of luck. Now, scientists for the last few decades have developed new techniques and ways of overcoming these problems so that we can now do it in a much faster, more precise, and more flexible way. Uh, but unfortunately, many people have taken issue with these technologies and, well, they've been banned in much of the world, for example, much of the European Union. One particularly vilified technology is transgenic genetic modification, the act of taking a gene or genetic code from one species and putting it in another. But this is perfectly natural. This occurs all the time in nature. What is unnatural or artificial is our concept of a species. The natural world has no respect for these boundaries we have attempted to impose on it. It is far more diverse, flexible, and porous, especially when it comes to the movement of DNA. So, for example, um, just this year, we discovered that sweet potatoes, uh, the mold that makes blue cheese blue, and even the monarch butterfly, all contain DNA from other species. They are natural transgenics. We've been living with them and interacting with them for generations with no known ill effects. Now, biotechnology, or sh sorry, I should say um, transgenic genetic modification, is just one in a suite of new tools which have been developed, all of which broadly come under the term biotechnology. And they are part of one of the most exciting revolutions of our time, the genomics revolution. And this revolution is rapidly expanding our knowledge to a vast extent in terms of how, what we understand about genetics and how we can modify genomes. None of these technologies are in and of themselves dangerous. The thing it doesn't matter how you modify a genome. What matters is what you change it to. Focusing on the method is missing the point. In, in essence, modern biotechnology is just a refinement upon the ancient craft of genetic modification. And in terms of altered DNA sequences, uh, the, the effect of modern biotechnology is minuscule compared to the changes wrought by our farming forefathers. So we already have the technology um, and the knowledge to save species, to increase crop productivity, and even bring species back from the dead. But having the ability to solve a problem does not mean that it will be solved. We need more than technology and knowledge. We need the will to solve a problem. Now, there is a big difference between doing something by accident and doing it on purpose. The thing is that um, we now know the impact we're having on this planet. We can no longer claim ignorance. It is time we took responsibility, and with that took action, and began to deliberately genetically modify the world around us to save and enhance biodiversity, to increase our agricultural productivity, and to create an environment we can be proud of, of a legacy for our children and grandchildren where they can live happily. Will future generations look back and struggle to comprehend how we were happy to passively and unconsciously destroy the natural world around us? but vigorously opposed attempts to try to save and enhance it. In the case of genetics and biotechnology, we are actively preventing solutions and passively allowing disasters to happen. The science of the future is but a refinement of the innovation which nourished the root of civilization. Whether or not this innovation can continue to advance and help us depends very much so on you. So as we will inevitably continue to genetically modify the world around us, I want you to ask yourself the question, should this genetic modification be something that we are unconscious of, a willful disturbance of the natural world, something random? Or should it be something that we strive to manage, to give direction to, and to use for our benefit and that of the world around us? 
think carefully because your answer matters to us all. Thank you.